we have found Jesus. But at the same time, we are pursuing Jesus. It's the soul's paradox of love. We are in Christ, but with all of our might and all of our mind and all of our strength, we are pursuing Him, the one we already have. Seek, and the door will be open. Is a God to be found. Oh. Apathy is the greatest foe to spiritual growth. That an infinite God has the ability to give all of himself to each of his children. He is not limited. He is an infinite, limitless God that he would not give a part to you and a part to me and a part. He has the ability to give all of him to each one of us. convinced that a day in his presence is better than a thousand elsewhere. That a moment in his presence is better than a thousand conferences. God, we're not here for what we can get from you here to glorify you. Self-promotion has been disguised as the promotion of Christ so commonly in our generation that it raises little excitement. God, we're not here to get anything from you. We give you glory. Our bodies are living sacrifice to you. Lift your hands in this place.
for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that whomever would believe shall not perish but shall have eternal life. Theologians say it's the gold standard of the New Testament. They say it's the diamond head of the Bible. 26 words that wrap inside of it, theological concepts that will blow your mind that God is so limitless in His love. That God is limitless in His love. That God is a Father. That God has a Son. That there is a perishing. There is a journey of faith. And there is an everlasting life. It's a theological chasm to dive into and a cake of grace to feast on. And throughout history, if you study the Bible, this one verse has resonated most with all of humanity. It is not common or boring. It is the most famous words that come from a book that is alive. And throughout all of history, it's these words that resonate with humanity most. For God so loved. Not just the church, the world. For God so loved the world that He sent His Son that whomever believe shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. It's fresh for the new believer and it's stunning for those that know Him. There is nothing boring or common It is, the, it is the truth that has resonated most throughout humanity. Crazy. But I was thinking, where did this truth come from? You know, when you watch a movie, there's a line in a movie that captivates your heart. And the power is not in the line of the movie, but the story behind the line. Like there's this movie, Notting Hill, where there's this very common Englishman and there's this famous American actress. And uh, this famous American actress, played by Julie Roberts, comes and confesses her love to this commoner and he rejects her. And he says, you're a woman from Beverly Hills. I'm a man from Notting Hills. Everyone knows your name. My mom can't even remember mine. I'm too scared I'll just be forgotten tomorrow. And she turns to me and says, fame isn't real, you know. I'm just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Anyone watch the movie? And the weight is not in the line. The weight is in the story. And how John 3.16 came about, there was a man from the Sahedron, a very learned, educated man. He was from the ruling priests the ruling uh, uh, priest that ended up killing Jesus. And he heard of this Jesus that was doing miracles because the miraculous unlocks the hardened heart. Just how Jesus, he went to the wedding and he turned the water to wine. It says in the scriptures, because it revealed his glory. The first miracle that Moses did, he turned water to blood. 
in the first miracle that Jesus did, He turns water to wine. Because the Lord demands a sacrifice, but grace releases joy. And he sees, Jesus goes about, starts doing miracles and this Pharisee of Pharisees, the one that wanted nothing to do with him, his heart starts to turn. I love the miraculous. It reveals the glory. And the heart of this man, Nicodemus, starts to turn to a point where he sneaks out of the camp he tells all his friends, he tells them, I'm going to bed. And he sneaks his way towards Jesus, confused but curious. And he gets closer and closer. And it's in the dead of night in a confused space. And he meets with Jesus. And he says, surely you can't just be a man. I've seen the miracles. Oh, I love it, eh? Jesus says you need to be born again, not just of water, but of spirit. Because childlikeness opens up the heavenly reality. You need to become like a child, born again. Some of you need to be born again. And out of this moment in a dark place with a confused man, in secret is birthed the scripture that resonates with all of humanity. Not on the hill and on the mountain with a loud shout in a dark and a confused space, the scripture that resonates most with humanity is deposited. And the Lord spoke to me, Rich, your legacy moments won't be your loudest moments. It'll be the decisions you make in the quietest, darkest place like Chris was talking about in a depressed place. The sound came out of him. How crazy is this? It was two years later, the very same man that went in a dark and confused place is the very same man that takes Jesus' body, the Word made flesh, and lays Him in a tomb in a dark and a confused space. Crazy. In the very place this Word was given, dark and confusion, the Messiah dies and He lays Him in a tomb only to see the resurrection happen. And the Lord spoke to me, He said, my word is given in dark and confused places and my word is fulfilled in dark and confused places. It was on Monday night, I had a dream. And in this dream, there was a bull that was running towards me. And this bull knocked me over and I fell on the ground and I'd hit my head. I wake up in the natural, in the middle of my room, my bedroom, on the ground with my head throbbing. I think this is funny. I go back to bed. I wake up in the morning and I have this massive like gash, like this bloody gash on my head. And I look at my drywall and there's a hole in my drywall. It's a Monday. It healed okay. <laughs> and I went to uh, I went to the head of the Sozo department, Yvonne Martinez. And I told her the dream and I asked her what she thought. And she said, Rich, I, I think that what you're running at at the moment, what you are going at at the moment is too big for you and you need help. The things that you're going after are just too big for you. And it's like they're gonna take you up. But in that same space where I'm at, 
This is where God speaks. And I believe there's people here that it feels like a bull is running at you. And uh, God wants to cancel that and say, no more bull. (laughs) And it feels like there's stuff that is coming up against you that is just so overwhelming. You feel like you're in a dark and almost confused space. And the Word wants to come into that place. And the Word wants to speak into that place. And the Word wants to be fulfilled in that place. You may be waiting for that situation to get sorted out. And God says, watch, let me encounter you in the situation right now. Let me encounter you right there. And if you don't know Jesus, let me tell you something. For God so loved the world that He sent His only Son, that whomever believes in Him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And if you know Jesus, the same is true in that dark and confused space for you. For God so loves you that He sent His one and only Son, that you shall not perish there, but you shall have everlasting life there. The gospel is so beautiful. It is stunning and fresh. Turn to someone next to you and say, wow. (laughs) If you're in the room and you realize you're far from God and you need Jesus, You need to come to Jesus. I don't wanna leave this place without giving you an opportunity to respond. And the reason why I'm doing it publicly, because the scriptures say, if you acknowledge God before man, He will acknowledge you in the heavens. So if you would be here and you're like, I'm far from God, I need Jesus right now. I need Jesus. I've come to church and I need Him. I want you to stand and raise your hands and wave at me so I know. Oh, what's your name? Jess. Why don't you stretch your hands out to Jess right now? Oh. Jess, let me tell you, for God so loves Jess that He sent His one and only Son that, Jess, you shall not perish, but for your faith in Christ, you will have eternal life, Jess. You will have eternal life, Jess. We declare over every area where you've been struggling, we declare the eternal life of God to come in. Where there's been anxiety and where there's been pain, we declare in Jesus' Name you would crash in. Where it's felt like there's a bull running after you and you felt so overwhelmed, we declare, Lord God, in her life, no more bull. We declare in Jesus' Name that you would touch her and mark her. Today would be a transforming day. Woo, why don't you give her a round of applause? That's amazing, Jess. Wow. Woo. It's in dark and confusing spaces that God speaks and your whole life gets changed. I was in the Congo doing my first cru- crusade and I remember a while I was there, all the missionaries that were alongside me, they thought I was a little bit crazy. I had crazy long hair like this. I had bracelets from here to here. And I had, uh, I wore lots and lots of colors and I tied these funny things in my hair. I looked a little bit crazier than I do now. (laughs) And I would go into these townships and I would gather a crowd of a thousand kids and I'd start throwing kids in the air and start getting them all to sing. And and, uh, they'd all start piling up on me and I'd be wrestling them and we'd share the gospel, lead them to the Lord and invite them to the crusade and and these more conservative missionaries came in and they they looked at me and they looked at the the stir that I was making with the universities and the schools that I was going to and they did not like it 
And they sat me down and they said, Rich, uh, you are setting the work we've been doing here back three years. I was like, I didn't know I was that powerful. <laughs> the way you look and the way you love, it's, it's not doing good for us. And I had spent all my money, every cent I had, to go and to, uh, and, and to sow into this land. God said you go to an African country and uh, your life would change. So I remember being absolutely broken in tears. And I remember they put me under house arrest for uh, two weeks. And I, I remember it was in this dark and confusing space that the Lord spoke to me. It was seven days after I'd been filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord spoke to me and I remember walking up to a, a, a bookshelf and there was a book there called Power Healing by John Wimber. I remember, I'd never heard of John Wimber. I remember pulling it out. I was having these weird experiences where I'd walk past people that had pains in my body and then I'd know where they would need healing. And I opened up this book while under house arrest and I started to read of John Wimber as he would have pains in his body and he would know it was healing. And I thought, oh, I'm not crazy. And in dark and confused space, the Lord started to speak to me. And I remember, uh, I remember I went to the head evangelist who was there and I walked into his uh, place and I, I said to him, you know, I, my heart is pure. I just wanna serve and I don't know what to do. And these men have told me that I need to get on a flight and go home or shave my head and just keep quiet the whole time. And uh, you can hear that the story ended. So. <laughs> And so the evangelist said to me, he said, Rich, take what these men have said to you and take it to the Lord. And whatever the Lord has said, I'm gonna back you and I'm gonna support you. So I went to the Lord with this in a very dark and confused space. And, and I remember I took this to the Lord and I said, God, these people are saying I'm trying to draw attention to myself, um, but I just wanna draw attention to you. And he said to me, Rich, from your childhood, attention wasn't given to you and there's a, 2% piece of you that wants the attention of man. But there's this 98 or maybe more percent of you, which is a unique love that the world hasn't always seen. And I want you to keep that. And I felt God say, submit yourself to these men, even though they may be operating in a religious spirit. And so that's when I, start, that's when I shaved the side of my dreads. So this isn't for, uh, now it's pretty fashionable. But I remember I shaved half my, my side here and then the rest side over here. And then I hid my hair in a hat and took off all my bracelets. I, took, I wore only muted colors. I've kept that. And, uh, and I kept quiet. I shaved my beard and I kept quiet. And the, and the religious missionaries, they didn't say a word until the law, they didn't let me pray for anyone, anything. But I made a decision in a quiet and a dark place that there was a radical, lavish love that I carried, which was true. And I remember uh, giving a bracelet to one of the, the head evangelists. I gave him one of my wooden bracelets because I wore them from here to here, even on my leg, a oh, bunch. I was crazy. Look at me now. And... Uh, I dropped it in a, and I wrote him a letter and I gave it to him and I told him how he had changed my life that day in a dark and a confused space. Three years later, I see the same man at a conference I go to. I hadn't seen him. He was this famous evangelist. And I walk in and I see his wife and his wife runs to me and starts weeping. And she says, are you Richard? I said, yes, yeah, I am. And then her husband comes behind her and he's crying. First time he's seen me in three years. And he says, uh, and his wife says to me, uh, my husband Henny, he has had that bracelet next to his, the bed, his bedside for uh, three years now. He said his interaction with you changed his life. And uh, some of our most legacy moments will not be our loudest moments but they'll be in a quiet and a confused space where we make a decision and we say, Jesus, I'm choosing your way. And it creates a sounding boom of legacy throughout our lives that touch our children. And, and some of the greatest moments of your life sitting here won't be the loudest shout that you give, 
but it'll be that quiet moment with your child. It'll be that moment with your business where you choose integrity over gray. It'll be that moment in your family where you choose your wife over... uh, And these moments will call this legacy that will start to shift. This is the gospel. We are not called to be people on mountaintops. We are not called to be people where our name would be fame. We are called to be the foolish that would confound the wise. We are called to, uh, to be those that, that know not, but God uses us. You're a fool sitting there and God loves to use you. If you feel like there's been a bull running at you, and you feel like your world is just like, it's just so overwhelming. It feels like there's just been this onslaught that you're like, I feel like I'm about to get taken out by everything that I'm going after right now. I believe the Lord wants to speak to you in a dark and confused space. And I, want, I believe He wants to speak the gospel into that space. If that's you, I want you to stand by faith as quickly as you can. This is the gospel. And in a tomb, Nicodemus lays the word made flesh in a dark place, only to see a resurrection happen in a tomb. I believe I'm prophesying over those standing. I believe that the Lord is speaking legacy over you. That this time that you think is your hardest moment, God is saying, I'm forming identity in your family and you during this time. Where you think your back's up against the wall and it's your most difficult time, God's saying, I'm shaping you, Saul. I'm shaping you, Simon. I'm shaping the identity that you're walking in. Your family will be different. There'll be a cry that'll be as heard for for generations during this time, the Lord would speak into this place and there would be this resounding sound that would come through humanity through this time. These are the moments that God speaks. These are the moments that shape a man and shape a woman. This is the time where Jesus did not die for your highs and for your skills. He died on the cross for your weakness and for your brokenness and for your sickness. And that is a doorway that He loves to walk into. You are perfectly ripe for a radical encounter with God and a voice to be spoken over. Church, I want you to get around these people standing and I want you to start prophesying life over them. Church, I want you to get around these people standing. I want you to start prophesying life over them. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people, so... Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And as we've been praying for you, if you sense the Lord on you in a strong way, I want you to come forward to the front very quickly. If you sense the Lord on you in a powerful way, I want you to come forward very quickly. Just in the section here. And can some of the staff just come and bless what God's doing here? Some of my team that I brought to, just come and start blessing what the Lord's doing here. Thank you, God. I declare, for God so loved the world that He sent His only Son that whomever believes shall not perish but shall have eternal life. I declare eternal life marking you right now. I declare eternal life marking you right now.
And I declare where that bull has been running at you, we declare in Jesus' Name, a stop to it. And God, we declare heavenly help. Thank you, God.